Enjoy the best safety shows on the planet on safetyfm.com. On today's episode of Safety FM, we have a discussion about mental health and what's going on inside of the podcasting world. Broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando, Florida, here is your host, Dr. Jay Allen on Safety FM. This episode of the broadcast and the podcast is brought to you by Safety Focus Moment. They're consultants that want to help you get the safety culture you've been looking for. For more information, go to safetyfocusmoment.com. Hello and welcome to Safety FM. This is Jay Allen. How are you doing today? Well, I have to tell you, over the last few days, I've had the great opportunity to be at something called Podcast Movement. And I know it's not your typical safety stuff, but hey, we're going to talk about this for a second. Come to the realization over the last week that the medium that we are using to communicate, meaning you and I, is becoming more and more popular. And it made me think about a couple of things. The way that we have our discussions, the way that you and I speak on a weekly basis. Of course, I already know that you and I speak on Tuesdays and on Fridays. You also have some conversations with some of the other folks that we have here at Safety FM on a daily basis. And we've tried to grow this network of podcast and broadcast because, as you might be aware or not aware, we also have a radio station at safetyfm.live or at safetyfm.com, depending on which one you're at. What we do from time to time is we do some live streaming where lots of you guys come out and take a listen. We also replay some of the podcast and you guys have come out and take a listen to that. So I'm very appreciative of what you do on a day in and day out basis of interacting with Safety FM. So I don't know. I, I kept on taking a look at this and I kept on thinking, maybe it's time for you and I to have these conversations on how we're getting the information out there. So what do I mean? I mean this exactly. I mean, maybe it's time for you to consider to do your own podcast. Maybe it's time for you to consider and do your own broadcast. Now, I am opening up the network. And what do I mean? I mean exactly that. I am opening up the network to people that want to put shows out there that want to talk about what's going on in their world of safety. So right now, I started a website. I don't even know if I can say I started a website. Let me kind of rephrase that. I started a page on our safetyfm.com website that is called join. So if you go to safetyfm.com forward slash join, it gives you the opportunity to join the Safety FM network. So what I'm looking for is for people to come on and have discussions about safety related items and keep in mind what I am looking for is for people to have the discussions about safety and they all don't have to be based around human and organizational performance. And I know some of the people that are out there that are taking a listen to this are going to turn around and go, wow, well, that's different. So what I'm looking to do is really establish a network of podcasters and broadcasters that want to do something different. They want to get their messaging out there. I'm going to tell you the average podcaster and broadcaster tends to give up on this after probably about episode 11 or 12. That's kind of the average of what I've seen of the people that wanted to join the podcasting business. And right around that sweet spot of 11 or 12, they turn around and go, Uh, this is not for me. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of work that has to be done in regards to getting these podcasts and broadcasts out there. If you think that it's just going to be one of those things, you click on a microphone and start talking and that's it. Well, got some bad news for you. That is not just a podcast. Um, It's one of those things where we have to have these discussions where you have to understand that 
a lot of work has to go into it. I don't know what kind of podcast you want to have. I don't know if you want to have the talk show style podcast. I don't know if you want to have the storytelling podcast. I don't know if you want to have the call-in style podcast. And I don't know if you just really just want to sit around and have a conversation with yourself and take some calls or do a combination of everything or do something entirely different and maybe even be on the location when you decide to do some of the recordings. So that's my thought. And I know that this is going to not be your standard safety podcast today, but it's something that I want you to think about. The other thing that I wanted to bring up today was this. What if you know someone that you feel that would be a good fit? Can you forward them this information about potentially joining another network or joining a network of podcasters? I have to tell you, there's some excellent podcasts that are out there. And I think that they would be a great fit here. But that's only if they want to join. And I think, you know, the more that we talk about this, the more that we have the possibility of really establishing something big where it's kind of a one-stop shop. I mean, we're already kind of a one-stop shop, but we're really expanding and growing. I'll put it to you this way. We have so many shows currently that it will actually allow us to be on two streaming services at the same time. So think about that for a moment. So I'm looking for a little bit of everything. I'm looking for people to really wanting to expand their brand, expand what they're doing and really get involved in this world of safety. There are so many good people out there in regards of the safety world that I think you would be an excellent fit for this. But if you don't want to do it, I entirely understand too. So I guess that's really me talking about what I would love to see occur in regards of the Safety FM network. So I'm going to tell you today is not going to be a long format show. Now, I do want to reference a couple other things that have come up. So we all are aware of what occurred a couple of weeks ago in Dayton, Ohio and in El Paso. And, you know, it had a significant effect on us here in the U.S. And as I look at this, I know that if you do take a listen to the Rated R Safety Show, we had a brief discussion about this. But what if you did take the time and look into where you can assist and help these communities that were affected? What if you could take the time and assist your organization on what they could do if there was an active shooter that came about? There's been a big theme as of late, as you've probably noticed across on Safety FM, mostly talking about active shooters and mental health issues. And I don't want to sit here and say one goes with another or anything to that extent. That is not the conversation for us to have here today. But Suicide Prevention Day, or National Suicide Prevention Day, better saying, is coming up on September the 10th. There's an organization that's called To Write Love on Her Arms that I interact with, and I've, I've mentioned it before to you, so it's not some big surprise that I'm talking about it again. But this organization helps people with mental health. It helps people that are thinking about suicidal thoughts and are depressed. Do you have an organization that you back in regards of these thoughts? I really want people that are inside of the safety world and the safety space to have those conversations. I think that we become extremely shy in regards of talking about this. And I think that it's something that we need to talk about more and more. What's my reasoning behind it? The reasoning behind it is I've noticed across the board that people in our field of safety suffer of mental health. And I'm talking about more along the lines in the depression stages. And I say this because keep in mind that a lot of people that are do our line of work are thought of as the safety cop and nothing against cops, but they're always the loner kind of people in some organizations, not all organizations, in some organizations. And it's difficult when you're a solo person on an island when you're the one that has this belief on what can be done and people don't have the buy-in. 
So these are where some of these conversations need to take place. And I'm not saying that everyone who's inside of an organization or that interacts with safety is thinking about killing themselves or they're depressed. But I'm going to say there's a good chunk of people that are. And there's a good chunk of people that also don't want to have the discussion. And I don't want to sit here today and turn around and go, hey, um, you need to take a listen to what I have to say. And this is what you need to do. But what I'm going to say is maybe if you're in an organization and you are looking for help and you are turning around and saying, I am noticing that I am having some strange thoughts when it comes to my work. Maybe it's time for you to reach out to someone. And I'm not saying, you know, that this is the easiest thing to have the conversation about. But I also realize that it's difficult for some safety people, safety officers, safety managers, chief safety officers to have this discussion because they look at it as a sign of weakness. And by no means is this a sign of weakness. This is a sign of you being human. And I know that sometimes the expectation is that you're going to be able to do something much different than other people inside of your organization and you're held to a higher standard than most. I want you to know and I want to have the conversation with you here today where you can understand that you are human. You can have these discussions. People are not going to look down at you. People are not going to turn around and think any less of you because you're having an issue at this time. I think that these are conversations that we need to have inside of our organizations that we refuse to have currently. And I think that when we start looking at the next phase of safety, these are the conversations we really need to start having. The more I look into this and the more conversations that I have, I almost feel And I shouldn't say feel by being a researcher. You know how that goes. That the discussions that we have are difficult at times because we live two lives now. And what do I mean by that? I mean, we live a digital life and we live a life that occurs in the real world. But people want others to believe that that digital life that they have is their true life. It's the happy go lucky life where everything's perfect. And not everything is perfect. We live in an imperfect society. We live in an imperfect world. We attempt to make people safer. We attempt to get people home as good as they got to work or sometimes even better, depending on how you want to list it. You could be suffering of this problem right now. You could be suffering of a problem with mental health. And it is okay to look for help. It is okay to understand that you have a high stress job where sometimes things are not perfect in your world. We might live in a perfect world on our digital medium, on how we let people think that we are. But in the real world, we're not. And that's okay. It's okay to have that conversation. So I don't want to sit here and feel like I'm on a soapbox, but also at the same time, I want you to be aware that you can have this conversation. It's going to be a difficult conversation. I'm not saying it's not, but if you go to the website to write love on her arms and that's to write love on her arms, it's T W L O H A dot com. There's assistance that you can find right there directly on the page where they can help you if you're suffering of suicidal thoughts, depression, and mental health. And maybe you can further into the discussion. I know that I can't give you all the resources, me personally. I would love to. I would love to be able to have that discussion with you and share on what you could do next. But as you are aware, I am just an industrial and organizational psychologist. I will have 
limited ways on how I can help you. I can understand certain things, but I can't understand it all. And I want to tell you, as we have these discussions, this is something that a good majority of people go through. I want to have this open your eyes conversation about what's going on. It's okay that these things are affecting us. It is okay for you to seek help. It is okay for us to seek help. It's not going to be a long episode here today. I have been your safety manager and host, Jay Allen. And until next time, be safe. Now you can hear us around the world, streaming 24-7 at safetyfm.com. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.